Welcome to this week's Gibbs Cam video. Today we're going to show you some turning part here. What I want to do is do a small washer there with a countersink. But what I want to do is repeat it 10 more times. Now you could do one part, have the uh, subspindle come in and grab it and pull, do the next part and next part, but that wastes a lot of time. You could also use a bar puller, but you'd have to open the chuck, close, open, close a number of times. That just wastes a lot of time. So if you have a part that you can stick out far enough without having to uh, have some chatter, then we could do multiples all at the same time. Now I just drew these duplicate here, but you really don't need to. We could just delete all these. I'll just leave the second one there so I can so you can see the spacing there between the two. So if we go through the tools, I just have a 55 degree, a countersink, a drill, a grooving tool, and of course a part off tool. So if I run the simulation on here, let's rewind and play, you can see, let's slow it down a little bit there. So if we're facing off, just doing one cut up here. This is just a small part. Of course, countersink, drill. Then we're going to groove, a little relief there, and then, of course, part off. So that's our first part there. So since this is a turning operation, you can't go into the document control and do part duplication because that is in the milling. So this is a turning operation. But I want the turret pretty close to the part. I don't want it to go clear back home to do a tool change. So I'm going to click on tool change and I'm going to say part station tool change. And I'm going to tell it every time uh, you do a tool change, go up six inches in X and six inches in Z. So if I bring up my cam, you can see I have operation one through operation seven. One is, of course, facing this off, coming back and doing the turning operation and make sure, of course, you turn far enough back to where you can get the part off tool there because you don't want the part off tool hitting the shoulder of the next piece. So make sure you're far enough there. Then, of course, the countersink drill and the groove there. Of course, I'm just cutting down just a little bit past this groove down here. And then back a little bit down farther and then we have our part off tool there so in order to duplicate this it's pretty easy to do and this also works in milling if you go to the plug-in menu and you go down to TP trans so that actually stands for tool transform operations so this works in milling as well you have this in the plugins for milling and turning so if this was milling, you could do rotate. Uh, of course, you had live tooling on a lathe. You could use this as well. But you have translate, rotate, mirror, mirror vertically. You can choose the coordinate system you'd like to duplicate in and create a new coordinate system or transform in this coordinate system. Of course, how many times you'd like to do it because you've already done one part, so you want to do it nine more times. And this is, of course, the amount you can see here. I have the spacing at 0.1828 between each part. So just click on, first you need to select the operations that you want to duplicate. You can do one or you can do multiples or as many as you'd like and click on do it. And now you can see I have all 10 parts there. So if we run the rendering, you'll see what we're gonna get. Here's our first part. We'll speed it up a little bit. Now, as you can see, it is, uh, of course, the part's going to uh, fall off as soon as we get uh, run the part off tool through the part. So 
So what we can do is on the this run the first part runs run through seven and the uh, transform operations will always have a little plus in them as well. So what we want to do uh, before the last operation, we're going to do number six. So I'm just going to right click here, go to operation data, and that the you can do at op start or at op end. Now what I want to do this since this is the next to the last at the op end, I'm going to put some quotes. I'm going to type M73 because that's the code that uh, one machine uses to bring up the parts catcher. So then on operation number seven, which is the um, uh, part off tool, I'll just go to operation data again. And at the end of this, I'll put M74. So it puts the parts catcher away. So then when uh, after it, before it parts off, it'll bring the parts catcher up, it'll part off and then the parts catcher will go down and put the part away. You could, if you want, leave the parts catcher up there the whole time until you did all 10 parts and then have it go down. But of course you'd fill it up with chips as well. So going up and down may or may not be the best way to do it. So after you run the 10 parts, then you could have either, if you have a sub spindle machine, you could grab it with a sub and pull it out. Or if you have a parts grabber, you could grab onto the bar and pull it out. Now, usually what I do on the case like this is I calculate how long my bar is in the machine and how many pieces I can get out of that bar. And then I'll just put a macro uh, at the end of the 10 count, or you could do it at each one if you'd like to count. And then once I've reached that limit, you can have the macro, put a macro variable to pop up an alarm saying you're out of material, change the bar. So you can do that all in uh, macro variables for your part. Now, of course, we if we go to the end here, we have actually 70 operations here. If you go back to the front, if you want to kind of consolidate them, you could click on this button here and it'll kind of compress them all into uh, smaller tiles there so you don't have so many long tiles. If you want to make some edits, that's pretty easy to do. If you want to edit, you could just double click where it's compressed and it'll uncompress it in a tree next to the other tree there. Now when we go to post the code, before we post, let's go to work fixtures here. So in uh, 2023, which will be released next month, uh, they've added some things and this is one thing they that they have added by uh, coordinate system. So we can view the operations by operations, by work fixture offsets. You can see we're just using one work fixture offset for the whole thing or by coordinate systems and we can uh, view them any way that we would like to see. So if you want to consolidate those, uh, you could do it by coordinate system and then you could assign each uh, part its own coordinate system if you'd like. So let's go back to my operations. So if I wanted to, I could change these down here. Uh, in this particular post, it's um, might not do that because this has not been updated yet but you could uh, assign each part a coordinate system if you want or if when you did the duplicate and translate if you chose coordinate systems it would separate these into basically 10 different coordinate systems there and then you could choose the offset you want to use now in this particular part we just uh, let's go back here Actually, we'll just revert them all back to uh, G54. So we're using G54 for the whole thing. Now, since I'm only going back six inches in the X and Z to do a tool change, it'll be pretty fast. It'll rapid to the next piece uh, pretty quickly. So you're not spending a lot of time uh, rapiding between the parts. So, Or you could choose to do different coordinate systems if you'd like. Um, but just remember, if you did that, you'd have to set each coordinate system in the machine for the separation of each different part. So using G54, you're really not going to lose much time. And what's nice about uh, that as well is if you were in part number five and broke a tool, you don't have to start 
in the beginning and start cutting air for five different parts you could just go to that particular operation and just start right from there because it has all the code you need for that uh, let's just bring this up again to, just to show you so like I mentioned it's using uh, seven operations before it does the next part so you can see here's all the operations here there's third operation fourth fifth and six remember we put the code in at the bottom to bring the parts catcher up so by typing that in notice it put in the m code we need right in the machine to bring up our parts catcher and then of course number seven was our part off tool so we have it parting off the part and then m74 to put the parts catcher back so you could do it that way or you could um, put it at the very beginning of the program and end but you're going to get chips in the parts catcher There's our part, looks nice, easy to do. And then uh, one last item. We will be at the IMTS show, International Manufacturing Technology Show. That'll be in Chicago, Illinois. That's all next week, starting on the 12th and goes till Saturday. So if you've never been to that, it's a great show to go to. You want to uh, book out at least two days just to get around the show. Three days would be better, but two days you're going to be walking a lot just to get through all the show. But come over to the Gibbs booth. We'll be in uh, booth number 338880, and we'll have demos there and everything and show you what's new in 2023 if you'd like. And thanks again for watching. If you have any comments, please put them uh, below, and I'll be glad to answer your comments or suggestions. And thanks again for watching.